Hey folks, I'll show things on shoe.com. <clears throat> Let me talk about burnishing your matrix band. Now this is something that I've learned just in the last few weeks. And often, what we do, with, and this is with any stainless steel matrix, whether it be, this is auto matrix, whether it be with Toffelmeyer, unless it's pre-contoured, or even, this is Omni matrix, unless it's pre-contoured, these are all flat, essentially when you go to place this band intraorally, onto your tooth after you place it into your matrix system. Say for example, our trusty Toffelmeyer. If we place it correctly. When you go to place it in approximately, you sort of get a flat contour. And we're trying not to do that. We're trying to get a nice contour from the top to the bottom, a cousal to gingival also from buccolingual, a nice contour contact area versus a point contact. Now often what you can do, one of the tips I learned, I learned just learned, talking to another bunch of folks and reading some textbooks, is burnishing your, your stainless steel matrix before placing it intraorally. One of the techniques that I was taught was placing it intraorally and then burnishing it. You're gonna have to do that as if, even if you do burnish it extraorally. But one of the problems I've found, and same for every matrix system, especially if they're stainless steel, is that you go to burnish it, and this is a complex amalgam. Yes, I know there's lots of pins. It's for a demonstration for something else. But this works well for this because it's, you see how now I'm starting to see that wedge. And Dr. Queso talked about adjusting our wedges so we don't get that, get that little dent because I've been polishing, <coughs> correction, burnishing my matrix to the adjacent tooth. Now what happens is, you can see, I'm getting an odd contour to my matrix band. Let's just pull this out and you'll see even more so. So you can see that's a very common outcome of these complex restorations. You're trying to you're trying to get a an approximal contact, get decent contour, make sure you don't get material extru restored material extruded apically. And then you end up with this. You spend all your time. You spend lots of time preparing, making sure your occlusion's good. You have significant retention. Your bonding agent, whatever you're doing, and then you, even the simple thing like placing the, the matrix. So one way you can mitigate that is by pre-contouring your matrix. So let's compare just a regular. Matrix. I'm going to use the auto matrix, but essentially it's the same for all of them, Tuffelmeyer included. Uh, when we place it onto the tooth, we get that sort of straight, uh, no contour, straight from the gingival box all the way to the uh, our point contact. So what I've done is I've burnished one of these matrices extra orally just on a uh, two by two pad or a mixing pad with a burnisher, whether it be an acorn burnisher or a ball burnisher. And you can see it's a very subtle though. It's a change in contour. You can see it right there. That being the height of contour. Right approximately there. So once we place this on the preparation. You can see now we have a little more of a contour and aiming for better gingival health and actually a contact area versus just a contact point. So how did I do that? Well, a lot of textbooks and actually even Dr. Queso was showing me uh, extra orally and I did that with actually Toffelmeyer as well. You can see I burnished it here. You can burnish this and we'll continue to burnish it intraorally but just that pre-burnishing aids to develop that cont contour versus just that flat, if I spin around, there's just that flat surface and back to that nicely contoured. So how do you do that? Well, very simple, you can uh, take it, like I said, on a two by two mixing pad. It's gonna take a little bit of practice if you haven't done it before. So if this is our Toffelmeyer, for example, 
and this is going to be our gingival portion right here. Let's pretend this is our buccal and this is our lingual. Or say we're going to do a mesial contact. You can mark it or just sort of shoot by the hip, shoot from the hip. Take a ball burnisher and you're just going to start burnishing it. It actually takes a bit of quite a bit of pressure. I'm surprised. You can hear it burnished. So some of the textbooks suggest uh, using a small one to develop that contour and then a larger like an acorn burnisher to, to remove any of the little uh, craze lines that may be created. And then we'll just sort of smooth that out. That'll be our gingival portion. Let's see if we've done anything here. Okay, so you can see it just subtly there again, just that contour now. And you can get these in pre-contour bands. And with the auto matrix, same thing. Just sort of doing a chair side lab bench. Same thing, picking uh, the place where my contact's going to be and just developing it. So applying a decent amount of pressure. And one of the problems now is placing the band because it seems to it becomes very stiff, especially in the uh, gingival portion of the box. So it goes gently when you go to place it inch orally. So there you can see sort of that punched out shape. I'm going to smooth that off right here where it's sort of kinked. You can start to see that buccal con or that uh, proximal contact contour. Let's just smooth that out. Okay, so now you can see it's sort of that kidney shape. This reminds me of those uh, paleodent. I mean, they come pre-contoured already, the kidney shaped paleodent or bitine ring uh, sectional matrices. So there you go. So just a little bit of help in uh, placing, especially complex posterior restorations. Any little bit of subtle addition tips makes a huge difference in uh, making a successful restoration, fabricating a successful restoration. Cheers.